So I created the IUL challenge because of the fact that IULs never perform as illustrated. I get a lot of kickback for that comment, but it's a fact, it's true. This is the way that it's been going for uh, the last 25 years that IULs have been in existence. They've never lived up to meeting their promises as sold on the IUL. Well, why is that? Well, it's because illustrations are really never designed to be a promise. They're designed just to be a, a hypothetical scenario based on a certain set of assumptions. Now, the question then becomes, Chris, if IUL illustrations are not predictable, well, I don't believe that, right? Because why would a life insurance company create this sales tool, this illustration, if it's meant to mislead people into buying something that they don't understand, right? Like, because a lot of people think that, 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 that insurance companies are gonna have the best interest in their clients, uh, you know, in, in their clients' interest. And so the, what we're gonna do in this video is I interview Bobby Samuelson and we talk about, okay, what, what does this all mean? Why do life insurance companies do this? What has been the history of insurance companies doing this? And can you actually trust an IUL illustration? So let's get into it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video because I'm launching videos like this every single day. And if you're either looking to buy a life insurance contract or you're looking to sell it and you're trying to get better at what you do, there's no better place on YouTube than right here to learn how. Let's get into it. All right, so so I get this question a lot, and I'm I, I just love to hear your like two minute like rant on this. Like, a lot of agents are saying, Chris, why wouldn't uh, an insurance company go out and and try to get around regulatory things, try to make it so their illustrations will illustrate higher when they know they're not going to perform? Uh, these reputable, huge insurance companies who have the client's best interest at heart would never do a thing like this. Talk to me about that. <laughs> Whoever says that does not know the history of insurance regulation. I mean, if you look back to AG 38, which was the guideline to manage reserves for guaranteed UL policies, it was constant cat and mouse game of insurance companies hiding liabilities, trying to use tactics to reduce their reserves, and the regulators having to come in and update the regulation AG 49 for IUL, the same thing. You know, at the end of the day, insurance companies are not um, the moral arbiters of the universe. Like, I don't know why people put morality onto an insurance company. These companies are trying to sell stuff. They're yeah. trying to generally do things they think are right mm -hmm. based on whatever metrics they want to see at the, or they think at the time, um, whatever they can convince themselves. And they've got a lot of competing interests and so and, and so they make the decisions that they make. They're not moral decisions or immoral decisions. None of this is morally or moral. This is just trying to figure out how they want to position themselves and what tools they have available to do, to do that. So I don't I don't I don't have any expectation that they wouldn't try to maximize their competitive position at every turn in, in general. And there are certainly some exceptions to that. But that's the way most companies kind of optimize. Yeah. So so look, just because a company and the other thing is like companies will believe their own stories. I mean, I worked at a big insurance company for years. We had lots of internal stories that everyone, we just kind of believed that may or may not actually have been true. And I think IUL is a great example of this. A lot of IUL companies, I remember years ago talking to an IUL company and this company said, basically, we can't imagine a world where caps go below 10%. Okay. Now that company's cap is 8%. Yep. So, and, and at the time they said, we can't, and therefore we can't imagine an illustrated rate less than six and a half percent that makes sense. Well, now they illustrate five and a half percent. Yeah. Or 5.25. So it's like, that, don't, don't let insurance companies make your decisions for you. Yeah. Right? You as an agent need to make your own decisions and come to your own conclusions and decide what you think is fair and reasonable. Don't, 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 don't outsource that to, to an insurance company. Yep. Um, they're, they're, they're not moral actors or, or immoral actors. Just you need right. to make that call for yourself. Yep. Once again, use common sense. In it. Yeah, use, thank, you know what? I should have just shut up and just said use common sense. <laughs> I use, like, one of my mentors is a guy named Brendan Burchard. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's like a high performance no. coach, whatever. And he always says, he goes, common sense is seldomly common practice, right? Like, and so, you know, welcome to America. What's up, Cashflow Hacker? So remember, common sense is seldomly common practice. It is on you as the agent to do your own research, do your due diligence. Remember, this is your reputation on the line at the end of the day. This is your relationships with people that you care about. 
It is your responsibility to make sure that you are not just leaning on one entity, i.e. the life insurance company that obviously has a dog in the fight, right? Like they are in this to sell product and history shows that they really are not looking after the best interest of the clients in all ways. And by saying that, I'm not saying that they're intentionally looking to sabotage people and deceive people. But the bottom line is you have to look at how these things work. You have to look at the changes. And when you look at the history of how insurance companies have kind of battled and sparred with the regulators and, you know, kind of weave in and out of the regulatory environment just to be able to sell more, it starts to make a lot more sense. The story starts to come together. And so this is why I always tell people, if you're relying on just your upline, if you're relying on the insurance company to do your training, it's not enough. You need to do more. You need to dig deeper. You have a responsibility to yourself, to the people that you're selling to, to your reputation, to your future, to be able to know that you're doing this stuff inside out. Because if you don't, it's not going to go well for you. And that's the last thing I want to see for you. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribing to the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video because I'm doing stuff like this on a daily basis. And I, I just truly believe that it will serve you uh, in some way. So that's it for now. Have a blessed, inspirational day.